price. And I thought it not robbery to. via social media, our Facebook pages, or WTI. Magazine via issue.com and after we leave the air you can listen to our podcast via iHeartRadio under the balance of life our YouTube channel iTunes as well as Twitter and our Facebook page we thank you so very much for joining us today. Suite 803, Tampa, Florida, 33617. Classes range from $65 to $900. That's a range from one class all the way to a six-month unlimited amount of classes. Check them out. That is Studio 28 Dance Productions. We're taking a look at just something that, that falls into my spirit as I pray over individuals in the body of Christ. And as I was looking at 2 Kings, the third chapter, and right now I'm in a personal study uh, reading on Elijah and Elisha and their ministry. And something that sparked out at me as I'm getting to the third chapter, beginning at the first verse, it says, Now Jehoram, the son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel in Samaria, the 18th year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and reigned 12 years. And he wrought evil in the sight of the Lord, but not like his father, and like his mother, for he put away the image of Baal that his father had made. Nevertheless, he cleaved unto the sins of Jehoram, the son of Nebat, which made Israel to sin. He departed not from them. That right there was so significant to me that as you read in the Old Testament, 
as a new king came into play, the majority of them would put away certain things that defile God. But they did not put away all those things, which tells me that even though they put away things that were seen in the natural, their heart still served that evil. And what we have to come into the reality of and accept is that we must turn to God with our whole heart. Not partially. We can put away the things of the flesh, our practices, meaning we can stop drinking, fornication, adultery. You can stop stealing. Um, you can stop doing those things, but if your heart has not been turned from your wicked ways, it's just as if you're still operating in those things. When we stop doing those things, and I know that we discussed it before, and it's not to give God the glory, we fall up under self-righteousness or even a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. This is what these kings did. They had a form of godliness, but they denied the power of God thereof. And so in this segment today, I want to take the time to minister the word of God and, and to just teach and to share that we can't straddle the fence. We, we are either going to live in holiness and righteousness or we're not. There is no in-between. We, we have to get to a point in our lives that it is, it is for God I live and for God I die. It's, 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 this is how I'm going to live my life. It's those things that we think are so minute that we think that God is not, he's not com concerned about that little thing. There are no big sins and little sins in, in Jesus Christ. There, there is no respecter of person. There is the deity and the requirement of obedience. And, and, and I shall say this, it's not something that is done overnight. It's a gradual procession, a gradual pro I like to 
just send a very, very special thank you to the staff at the Florida Sentinel Bulletin paper here in Tampa, Florida for the article. of how I got started in business and and it is my passion and I thank them very very much also if uh, you are looking for books on local authors here in the Tampa Bay area our special is continuing through the 31st depended on me. I depended on me to get up and go to work and and pay bills.
and I'm very transparent on this, is I depended on me. I knew, and I always gave reference to God, that if he woke me up every day, I had the use of my limbs that I can get up and go to work. There was no excuse. Whether it was raining, whether it was cold, hot, only time I would stay home from when I worked within you know the corporate world was if I was sick and I had to be really really sick but I depended on me but how many of you realize that God wants us to depend on him I acknowledge God in everything that I do. I know that the craft that I do as a publisher, as as a as a mentor, as as a coach, anything that I do, I know that it came from God. I know that who gave me the ability. I know who equipped me for this. But I still felt that the dependence was on me. And you might be able to identify with that. We look at it as, yes, God. Welcome back to Motivation Speaks with Angel Ferguson. We thank you so very much for joining us. And I know that I sound a little nasally uh, because I am battling a cold. But nevertheless, uh, we are here. The rest of the holiday, uh, after, till Monday, well, until Tuesday, we will be on a recording show. Uh, so, but we will definitely come and share the word with
much for joining us. We'll be back on tomorrow with our recorded show where we will do a book review. We thank you. We love you. Stay encouraged, encouraging others along the way. Have a blessed day.